How's it going, you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Home Repairs, and it looks like battery-powered push mowers are here to stay. I just went in Home Depot the other day, and out of about 20 push mowers that they had in stock at the store, only four of those were actually gas-powered. Everything else was battery. So ready or not, they're coming your way. So for many of us homeowners, you're gonna need to buy a battery-powered push mower sooner or later if you're mowing your own yard, and it's small enough where a push mower can do that. So what I'm gonna do today is show you these two examples that I just purchased, my own money, not sponsored, the Ego Select Cut with Speed IQ. This has a monster 56 volt, 12 amp hour battery. If that doesn't make any sense to you, I will start to explain that a little bit more because that is critical that you understand the capacity of these batteries to get the right mower. And then kind of my own personal favorite would be Makita on their 40 volt max. It's actually a 36 volt lineup two different batteries in that one, each one of those being four amp hours. Both of these mowers have a cutting width of 21 inches and a ton of different features, which I will touch on a few, especially those that are very strong and great features and those that are not so great features, but really focusing in on runtime, charge time, and did it get the job done? Did it have enough torque to really plow through this very tall grass that I needed to cut? That tall grass was the second trial that I ran, kind of an extreme scenario where the grass was completely overgrown and nine inches tall. Just wanted to get a worst case scenario. We had each of these set on a four height setting and in mulching mode. So a very high torque, high demand application. That's gonna give us some run times to compare to, kind of that quoted run time compared to what we're actually seeing in that scenario. But the first trial I ran was more of an average height, your weekly or every other week, depending on where you're at. We still had quite a bit of grass growth, but it was not nearly as extreme as number two. Now I could compare acreage, so you can baseline that over to your application, but run time is probably a little bit better. Like how long does it actually take you to push mow your yard? Does that take 15 minutes or does that take an hour? So the times that I give, I think are going to be easier for you to relate those two. If you're doing just a normal cutting like trial number one or a very aggressive cutting like trial number two. But if you do want to see how big is your actual yard, not your lot, people get confused with that. Oh, I have a quarter acre lot or I have a half acre lot. You can go on Google Earth, not Google Maps, go on Google Earth, and on the left hand side you'll have a measurement tool. That measurement tool you can set a multi-point polygon where you can trace the perimeter of your yard. So you just trace the grass areas, and then once you close that polygon, you'll see, for my instance, in the upper right-hand corner as I drag the screen over, this area is 0.13 acres. That 0.13 acres, that would convert to one eighth of an acre. That is the plot that you'll see in that second trial. We're really chopping down some overgrowth, kind of like you went on vacation for a month, it rained a ton and nobody was mowing your yard. So let's talk about the quoted runtime that the brands will market. This Ego says up to one and a half hours of runtime and this Makita says up to one hour runtime. With trial number one, this was a normal cut and obviously both of these mowers performed much better in this instance than they did with the second trial. But for the first trial, the Ego ran for 59 minutes and 30 seconds. So right at one hour or 66% of the quoted time that you'll see in some of the marketing literature like at the store. Now the Makita came in at 24 minutes and 30 seconds, which is actually only 41% of that quoted runtime. So in this case, the Ego is delivering much closer to what you're gonna see at the store or in some of the marketing literature. Now, why is that? Don't forget this Ego has the biggest battery included in this model that I used. So it's that 56 volt with a 12 amp hour capacity. So if you look at your battery, there's usually a nameplate, and the way to compare these, you'll see a maximum watt hours, which would be the maximum energy storage that this battery has, or really any battery has. And here on the Ego, it reads out 672 watt hours. So that's the capacity of this battery, which is really kind of the top of the market for any sort of push mower or outdoor lawn equipment that are battery powered. If we look at the Makita, we're gonna have the two different batteries 
40 volts, actually 36 volts a piece. And these are only four amp hour a piece. Again, if we look at the back, it's 144 watt hours per or 288 watt hours together. So obviously 288 watt hours of energy capacity, energy storage in the Makita compared to 672 in the Ego. So you're starting to see where the drastic difference is. One difference on the Makita, you can get eight amp hour batteries. They will fit in this mower and that will double your overall energy storage and should double your overall runtime. But that comes at a serious price tag. Looking at the Home Depot website for those eight amp hour batteries, two of them can come in at $700. In $80. That would be more than I actually paid for this mower with the two 4 amp hour batteries. So, batteries are very critical when you're looking at these different mowers. So, for trial two, again, we're talking about nine inch tall grass. It was actually a little bit wet. There were some stumps and also some large chunks of concrete in there. So, it was not an easy trial. And both of these units would hit their actual torque limit and shut down which needed to be reset that happened many many times during this actual trial and it wasn't just with the ego or just with the makita now starting things off with the makita i just started mowing kind of the perimeter and only got 12 minutes of runtime which the torque was extremely high but that kind of gives you a worst case scenario that something that says up to one hour actually might only make it as little as 12 minutes. So just keep that in mind depending on what type of yard and what type of application you have. Now with the Ego, it did much better. I felt it did have significantly more torque and equal a better cut because the blade wasn't slowing down as much as I saw on the Makita, which then led to some striping that I saw on the Makita in this trial number two and the Ego then lasted 27 minutes and 30 seconds. Again, not getting you a ton, basically would have came a little short on just mowing that one eighth of an acre, but over twice the runtime as we saw with the Makita, which makes sense when we think about how much energy capacity each one of these have. So probably not fair to assess the normal weekly experience you'd have with one of these miles to that second trial. That is an extreme scenario, but it shows you how low the actual runtime can get. So you could plan that out if you actually have to cut a very tall lawn and knowing you're probably gonna have to charge the batteries or battery a couple times. Now I did a poll on the channel, thousands of you voted, and it was kind of at that level of how big of a yard do you think you could have for it to be practical to go with battery, right? Ditch gas, go with battery. How big of a yard is that? And about half of you said a quarter of an acre or under, and I think I would align up with that. Now, I think this Ego could go up a little bit higher than that, but don't forget also that your battery capacity over time will start to lose some of that capacity as the years go on. So if year one, you're just getting your yard done, well, year two, you might not be making it. Year three, you're definitely not making it. So having a little extra capacity at the start does make sense. Some of the quick features that I liked on these, I do like the select cut, the dual blade design on the Ego. I think it does make for a nicer cut. On the Makita, the controls, having a separate engagement for your blade and a separate engagement for the drive system. In addition to right here, there's a speed controller where you can easily with your left hand increase or decrease the speed. That is superior to what you're gonna experience on the Ego. And that's because Ego has the speed IQ, which is supposed to be an automatic system, it goes exactly how fast you want it to go. It simply does not work out like that. It's extremely jerky. It is not tuned correctly and it tries to match you, but it really just more fights you as you try to mow your lawn. And that's especially true when you're trying to mow around a tree, go around an obstacle, turn around for that next pass. Honestly, that feature I do not recommend. If I made a recommendation between these two, I would go with the Ego. I would go with the maximum battery capacity possible, at least the 10 amp hour, preferably this 12 amp hour, but ditch the speed IQ. Do not get that feature. It's kind of a train wreck, honestly, of a feature. So you'll see down in the description, I'll link to these products. You'll see the as tested Ego and then the as recommended Ego, which will not have speed IQ. The Makita I really wanted to like. 
I think the controls were fantastic, way better than the experience with the Speed IQ on the Ego. The construction is more durable. It just feels like a higher quality product. But the four amp hour batteries are kind of a showstopper. You would at least have to go with the eight out amp hour batteries. And if you bought this mower with two eight amp hour 40 volt batteries, you're talking about getting up to the $1,200 or $1,300 class, which is the absolute top of the market when it comes to the electric push mowers. So if you have a quarter of an acre or under battery, I think is a no brainer. So let me know if you guys have any questions down below the video in the comments and also let me know what mower you have and how it's working out for you on how large of a lawn. I really like to get that feedback and then that will help all other viewers that can look down in the comments and get a ton more feedback to help them with their purchasing decision. Now I'm kind of preparing for a off-grid detached garage, shed, small barn and trying to figure out how many solar panels do I need, what kind of battery capacity storage do I need to do things like charge battery powered lawn mowers, lawn equipment, have some circuits within that garage. If you're interested in that as well, check out this video and we'll walk you through how to size out how many panels you need to make sure you have the overall capacity to charge up one of these units. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on that next one. Take care.